hey guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome to my channel so um, today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to double your tracks in order to fit all your bundles onto your weight cap so I'm all, and I'm also gonna be showing you guys a little trick that you can do so if you're having trouble with your tracks not moving under your presser foot I'm gonna show you guys how to adjust your machine so that your tracks can move very smoothly under your sewing machine so before I start, I'm going to be showing you guys my settings on my machine. So um, right now, my tension is set in between 3 and 4. And my, my width is set on number 5. And my length is on 4. And my stitch is on zigzag stitch. So I had to like keep adjusting it to get the right setting for my bundles. So in the past, I had some very thin bundles and like I had, I set it differently for those bundles. But for these ones, they were a bit thicker, so I had to set it again because these bundles were not moving under my presser foot. So I had to set them differently. And I'm going to show you guys what I also did to also um, reduce the tension of my presser foot so that my bundle can be able to move smoothly under my presser foot. So there is a knob. There's a knob at the top of the machine, right here. So if you move this knob going towards the minus sign, that re that reduces the tension of your presser foot. So it basically moves, makes it easier for the material that you have to move under your sewing machine. But if you um, but if you turn the knob towards the plus sign. It adds tension to your presser foot. So that's just something that I've learned and I decided to show to share with you guys just in case anybody was um, going through the same thing that I went through so you guys can it'll be easier for you. So let's get right into this. So when you're doubling your tracks, you have to make sure that your bundles are not like that. They're not on top of each other. Okay, so they're not right on top of each other. They have to be a little they have to be parallel to each other so not on top but right underneath right below so you, to give you an effect just like this okay so we do not want them on top of each other we want them right below right beside. so when you're about to start sewing your tracks together you do not want to start from the very beginning of your tracks you want to put your tracks a little past the presser foot because if you start from the very beginning your tracks might not be secured properly they might fall apart so you can put your bundle a little past the presser foot and then what I usually do is that instead of doing a regular stitch in the beginning I would reverse stitch then I'll continue stitching. Another trick that I do to ensure that my tracks are very close to each other but not overlapping each other is that um, I actually let them overlap each other before I put my presser foot down. So I'll put I'll let them overlap just a little bit because when I actually do put down my presser foot, my presser foot actually separates the track, the tracks, leaving them right beside each other in the exact spot that I want them to be. So I'll show you guys a close up of how it actually looks after I put the presser foot down. But another thing that you guys can do is that you guys can flip the top track over the bottom track and that actually ensures that the tracks stay close together while you're sewing. So as you guys can see in this video, I, I'm flipping the top track over the bottom track and you see how close they are together right now. And you can also see how close the tracks are after I put my presser foot down. So they're not slipping or they're not separating. So now we can start stitching. So as I said in the beginning, before I start um, doing a regular stitch, I actually reverse stitch and then I continue with a regular stitch. So um, what I also do is I try to make sure that there's no hair in the way because you don't want the hair to get caught in your machine because you don't want it to get jammed. So I'm just going to speed through this part and you guys can just watch me doubling my wax. And one more thing is that you don't really have to, you don't have to go really fast. You can take your time to make sure that everything is done nice and neatly. So um, yeah, so here we go. So guys, this is the finishing product. It looks really neat. 
um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and once again I'll catch you guys in my next video so bye for now